We spend most of our time training on a flat range against paper targets. Those paper targets represent real threats that might occur in the real world, around barricades, around things like this dirty truck or that car. Today on SWAT Magazine TV, Kyle Lamb is going to help us learn how to use these things for the maximum protection in a worst case scenario. So if I was going to come and shoot around the back of this truck, if this is the only thing I had, I, I didn't want to go low for some reason, I'm shooting 100 yards or whatever it might be, I start moving up to this vehicle, I'm going to drop my arm through my sling, grab the front of my magazine well, transition the weapon to my support side, I'm going to use my forearm, push against the side of the vehicle, to stabilize the weapon. When I'm done with that, safety will go back on, grab the front of my magazine well, transition the weapon back to my strong side. I move around the vehicle. It's time for me to pop this corner. I'm going to keep my back knee up. That way I can quickly step out to take my shots. I may want a little bit of support off the vehicle. So I'm going to grab my weapon with a C-type clamp there. I'm going to go off the side of, side of the vehicle and take my shots. Okay, safety back on. Now moving over to the other vehicle. <clears throat> Sometimes we're going to have to deal with an extremely low position. We may not uh, be able to get into an, a, a normal prone firing position. So we're going to use a position I call broke back mountain prone. Some cops from uh, California named this, and I think it's kind of a fitting position or name for the position you'll see when I get down in this position. If all I had for, for cover was this tire and the engine block, but I still have to shoot under the vehicle to see where the bad guy's at, because if he's crouched down, I may not be able to see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place my feet close to the tire of the vehicle. I'm going to take my hand, place it down here. I'm going to take my vertical grip and hook it on my forearm. I'm using that to pull the weapon back into my shoulder. I'm going to ease down and around until I've got a target. I'm going to engage the threat from right there. On this particular range, we can't get uh, the targets low enough to actually see them down range, so we're not able to engage there. So I could drop down into position, take my shot. If I had to transition to the other side, I'll simply grab front of my magazine well, spin back around, and I'd shoot around this side of the vehicle. If, uh, if you don't have a vertical grip, don't worry about it. You can also just take your forearm and push the magazine against your forearm and do the same thing. Some position just like this. Try to stay as low as, as you possibly can. Move. Safety on, transition. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Look where your knee is at. Switch knees, switch knees. Okay, lean into that vehicle, get some good stability. Now if you had to step out, you could do it. Okay, continue to the next vehicle. Safety on, hustle, hustle, hustle. All right, good. Okay, hold up right there, John. Okay, shooter ready, move. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Be aggressive, be aggressive, lean into it. Safety on. Okay, what do we gotta be careful of, guys? Look at the stance he's got right here. It doesn't look too bad, but the problem we've got is if his buddy happens to be a little clumsy and bumps him, look what happens. He's going to get pushed out from cover, so he's going to square his body a little bit more. You see, I've really got to push him to make him move. There you go. Keep your head down. Keep your head down. Safety on. Hustle to the next vehicle. Hustle, hustle, hustle. All right, good. Index. Move, move, move. Hustle, hustle, hustle. On. Hustle to the front. Move. Hustle, hustle, hustle. There you go. Good. Safety on. Okay, this time, put your hand down and pull the vertical grip back against it. Other way. Put the vertical grip in front of your wrist and pull back on it. How do you like oh, that? Much better. There you go. Good. Good. Hustle. All right, good. What do you think of that? That makes Much a big better. difference, doesn't huge, it? Huge, huge difference. And it gives you that elevation change that you need. If somebody's close, you're going to need to quickly switch your elevation, and you can do that. And if you're shooting a 308, you hook that vertical grip, you don't even notice it. The recoil doesn't matter at all. Really big difference. The small points of these techniques that you're sharing with us really make a huge difference. I'd never seen that position before, but the world of difference that putting that vertical foregrip on one side or the other made, impressive.
These are the kinds of details that you get when you come out to train with somebody who has operational experience and a wealth of training knowledge. Kyle, I really appreciate you giving us the practical application here with these vehicles. Now, later in the show, let's go inside, take a look at how we're going to use this for the homeowners as they're actually moving through. Sounds good. Perfect. All right, good shooting. Being an armed citizen means having a gun with you all the time. Carrying a firearm every day requires a holster that is both concealable and comfortable. Whether you choose our Super Tuck Deluxe or Mini Tuck, you'll have the confidence that comes from being discreetly and comfortably armed, prepared to face unforeseen dangers. Crossbreed holsters are handmade in the USA, come with a lifetime warranty and a two-week try-it-free guarantee. Order your holster today at crossbreedholsters.com. At the Gander Mountain Academy, we have the luxury of training in a simulation type environment. What I mean by that is scenario based training. What makes scenario based training unique, especially to the Gander Mountain Academy, is the teaching moments in this room, as you can see by the screens around me, it's about being immersed, fully immersive in the scenario. But more importantly, the instructor that is facilitating this. This is a room where we can learn from our mistakes in here, not like we can on the street. As a student preparing for this type of training, it's important, you need to know that there's a misconception out there that the training is actually in pulling the trigger. That is far from the fact. We need to know our scenarios. The most important part of this is teaching. At the Gander Mountain Academy, their abilities is what makes this training top notch. The ability to adjust on the fly because you need to get something out of this, not just playing the scenario, because playing the scenario is the easy part. The hardest part is being able to be taught those simple things that we take for granted. In here, this is as safe as it gets, but the scenarios here are phenomenal. You are gonna find yourself totally immersed in the environment. The scenario itself has scripted teaching points. You know, anybody can cover those scripted ones, but the real facilitators, the true instructors that really grasp this concept have the ability to strictly and solely watch the shooter because that shooter, every one of us who is the shooter, will do something in that scenario that triggers a teaching moment. We need to find that instructor out there that has the ability to exploit those weaknesses or those areas for improvement. The teaching points that are scripted, they're a given, but the key factor really is those unexplained ones that happen. Time to look at another great product from Crossbreed Holsters. And today I'm carrying in the four o'clock position and I'm carrying a Ruger LCP. And the best and the first holster designed exclusively for this subcompact 380 is the Crossbreed Holster Mini Tuck. And this has all the advantages of the Super Tuck holster, this holster's big brother in the original Crossbreed product, but specifically designed for the smaller subcompact pistol. Now obviously that means you're gonna have a thinner package, you're gonna have a less actual leather against your skin, and of course we've got less protrusion out into the waistband pushing up against the belt and the pants because of the thinner gun. In this case, I actually have an LCP that has a side mount laser attached from LaserLite, and we can see that it has absolutely no problem getting in and getting out of this holster. Now this holster has plenty of relief so that you can get your grip on the defensive firearm before you pull out, and of course, like all Super Tucks, it's adjustable for depth of ride. So in other words, we can push this up and we're gonna get different placement or push it back down and get different placement of the holster itself as it sets inside the waistband. And because the metal clips are adjustable, we can also adjust for angle of cant once we're attached to our belt without any problem. The Mini Tuck is a perfect solution if you carry a subcompact Ruger LCP for personal defense and you like carrying in the four o'clock position. But one of the things you may not have realized is that you also can use this holster in the appendix position. So there's some versatility here. Not only can you wear the holster in the tradi traditional positions, but you also could put it inside the waistband here in front of my body in the appendix position also. So I can go ahead and attach one clip to the belt here and one clip to the belt over here and actually be carrying inside the waistband in a position where the gun is very protected from any unauthorized access and I can reach it with both my strong hand and my weak hand. And of course, I get that concealment product inside the waistband in the appendix carry from Crossbreed. The Mini Tuck Holster is another outstanding quality product from Crossbreed.
2002 when we began the alert training program, this property out here was 40 acres of dirt. There was nothing. Um, we brought in Joint Task Force 6 uh, active duty military unit to come in and do our initial uh, construction for us. They did the initial dirt work, they built the initial pistol range and rifle range. Since that time we've slowly been growing and slowly been adding facilities and equipment to train in. We currently have a classroom and office facility uh, that, uh, that we can, our, house, our staff is housed there. Uh, we also have our logistics building as well. Uh, next to that we have a pistol range. The pistol range is covered. We have an action target turning target system as well as an action target rubber trap berm. Goes out to 40 yards and has a range control building with it as well as storage and uh, ammunition and target storage. We also have a rifle range that goes out to 300 meters. Uh, again, it has an action target rubber berm, uh, fixed positions at all the way back to 300 meters. We recently added a breaching facade. Uh, it is outfitted with the BTI breaching doors, uh, both shotgun breaching, ram doors, pry doors, as well as breaching windows and shotgun breaching doors. Uh, our first shoot house that we had is an action target match house. It has six rooms in it. It is enclosed by a metal building that enables us to train during the daytime, but also close it out and make it dark during the daytime. We recently just added our tactical training system building. Uh, this is a state-of-the-art training building that we'll use for force-on-force -force training. Uh, it's two-story, also had a, has a four-story rappel tower in it, uh, dim, dim light system, movable wall system, and also has a smoke generation system in it as well. We also just completed an action target, another action target shoot house. It is two-story, 360-degree live fire shoot house, state-of-the-art again. It has outfitted with a camera system uh, that is tracked in every room. Uh, it enables uh, the instructors to track the students and track the participants through every room on a computerized system that they can then go back and, and review in the classroom. The entire facility is about 40 acres, uh, encompassing all the different things. Uh, we can do driving out here. We do some off-road type driving. Uh, we can do ambush type drills. Uh, we have done some with the military. We've also done some training with our troops that are now deployed on the southwest border, uh, protecting um, our, our southwest border. One of the mainstays of the, of the facility out here is our equipment room. Now, this is where we store all of our equipment that we take the alert program on the road and travel across the United States. Uh, we have enough training equipment to outfit 22 training kits so we can be simultaneously 22 different places across the nation at any given time delivering our training course. SWAT Magazine delivers great information straight to your doorstep every month. Head over to SWATMag.com and subscribe today. Being an armed citizen means having a gun with you all the time. Carrying a firearm every day requires a holster that is both concealable and comfortable. Whether you choose our Super Tuck Deluxe or Mini Tuck, you'll have the confidence that comes from being discreetly and comfortably armed, prepared to face unforeseen dangers. Crossbreed holsters are handmade in the USA, come with a lifetime warranty and a two-week try-it-free guarantee. Order your holster today at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Welcome to Personal Defense Network. For years, we've been the internet's leading destination for high quality information on equipment, training, and your preparation for personal or home defense. Our videos are meant for those who are serious about enhancing their ability to use efficient techniques to survive a dynamic critical incident. But now we've stepped things up even higher. We've added hours of high quality training videos just for our premium members. This content takes the body of work that is the Personal Defense Network up to an even higher level. We've got the same types of experts that you're used to seeing, the people who know not only what to teach, but also how to teach, and most specifically, how to convey that information to you efficiently with premium online content. This is simply the best stuff you can find on the web. So how do you get started as a premium member? Simple. First, choose the plan that suits you. You can either pay monthly or sign up for a whole year in advance. Then you're gonna find categories of videos that are meant exclusively for you to help enhance your preparation for personal defense. Let's go inside and take a look. On the categories page, you'll find that all of our topics are organized in a way that makes sense so that you can easily find the information you're looking for. Once you go to a specific category, you'll see our normal short length video tips. You'll also see step-by-step -step drills with written instructions, as well as full length courses that are designed to help you learn as efficiently as you can with the time you've got. And of course, as you've come to expect from the Personal Defense Network, we're always adding new information. We're constantly out taping and collecting video with experts from around the world that you can find inside of your premium membership. And the best thing, you'll be able to take this membership with you with a smartphone, mobile device, or simply log in at whatever computer you happen to be by.
Our goal with the Personal Defense Network is simple, provide you with the highest quality video learning tips that are available. You'll find them inside of the premium membership. All you have to do is choose how to get started, monthly or annually, and I'll see you on the inside. Anyone who owns a firearm for personal or home defense probably has an opinion about caliber. But let's see what our guest instructors have to say on the topic. I prefer 45 just because I'm, I'm used to the 1911 platform. I've shot with 1911 platform for years. As far as, uh, as, far as anything, I'd say more than caliber choice, it's uh, shot placement and being able to perform your weapon appropriately. Caliber choice for me personally is a 9mm. Um, I, for home defense or personal defense, I go with a core bonded round. Um, technology, again, is, is, is made drastic improvements. You know, there used to be the old school of thought that got to have a 45, stopping power, all that. Well, the, the studies, 9mm does the job. And me personally, I have more 9mm handguns than I do anything else. But by no means am I shunning the 40 caliber or the 45 because they all have a place. I think for my students it boils down to a preference of their particular style of handgun and what fits their hand better, but 9mm. I, I don't believe caliber is as important as shot placement. From what I've seen, a lot of guys have said that, for example, 5.56 won't kill people. you got to have 6.8 or something like that. Uh, I'm a big fan of 5.56. I'm a bigger fan of 7.62 because we got the extended range. As far as pistol goes, I would say what, sh what pistol can you shoot well? As long as it's nine millimeter or larger, that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, there's a lot of great bullets out there. You need to, need to look around uh, and research that and see what works for your application. But if you have small hands, you, don't want to, you probably don't wanna shoot a 45. You probably wanna shoot a nine or a 40. Caliber means absolutely nothing without the marksmanship skill. So that's number one. Um, after that, if the shooter has a marksmanship skills, I really don't think it's, I think we're arguing semantics a lot of times. I, I would tell somebody to go with what, uh, what you feel the most confident with, what you feel you can maintain a, a high level of skill with, and uh, what's within your portability. You know, a lot of times ammunition, particularly exotic ammunition, is costly. And if you don't, you can have the best equipment in the world, but if you're not out there training on a regular basis, it doesn't matter. Caliber choice is extremely important, and I think it's all individual. Um, I think it's gonna be up to the, each individual person as to what caliber that is. Whatever caliber a person is not afraid of, can handle, can control, and accurately put fire on the desired target, that's the caliber they ought to go with. Uh, it's gonna depend on what we're talking about. If we're talking about a handgun, uh, I think that caliber choice is uh, moot once you get from nine millimeter or up above a nine millimeter. Uh, 9 millimeter, 40 or 45 loaded properly, putting the rounds in the right spot are going to stop someone. Not that important. Be accurate with it, whatever it is, a slingshot or a 50 cal. It doesn't matter. Be accurate with it. All right, we're here at the Alert Facility Indoor Shooting Range down here in San Marcos, Texas. Kyle, we saw the learning how to transition and learning why to transition for the practical application of the law enforcement guys around vehicles. Now we're inside of a home setting. What are we going to do in here? Uh, basically the same thing. If you're by yourself, you need to move through your house, around vehicles, whatever it might be. We still want to transition to give ourselves as little uh, available target to the bad guy as possible. When we pop these corners, driving corners, whatever it might be, we want to, if I can go left-handed and get less exposure, that's what I want to do. So what we're going to do is try to take these guys through this scenario and see, just see how they react when we do that and make sure that they're, they're putting their safety on when they need to, uh, they're transitioning the correct way, they're having a good stance so they're not falling out there and, and having more visibility to the bad guy. Excellent. Well, I'm going to head up onto the catwalk. I'll send the students into you and can't wait to see how they do. All right. Okay, Lee, what we're going to work on here is uh, we're going to have you do this strong side the first time just to show you how much more exposure you would have if you kept the weapon on your right side shoulder. So go ahead and clear that corner. Don't engage the threats or anything if they're there. Just uh, pop out there and see what you see. Now you can see how much is, ex is exposed. You've got, well, you got all your head exposed to a bad guy if they were down that hall, correct? Correct. Okay, so come on back in. So you remember earlier today how we talked about the transition. You're gonna take your firing hand, grab the front of the magwell, transition to your support side. 
and then we're gonna do the same thing on the support side. So whenever you're ready, do your transition. There you go. Step forward, weapon stays unsafe until you have a target to engage. You pop that corner. Good, safety comes off, do not shoot. All right, good. You can see how much less exposure you have here. You're still pretty stable. Feel pretty good? Pretty good. And this is a good example of where we could actually use our hand like, like a C to clamp that weapon to that uh, wall. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right, safety on. Let's come back and let's go hot. Okay, the scenario that we're gonna have here is we've got, uh, we got Lee in his house. This is where he's been hanging out. Actually, why don't you go ahead and ground your weapon over in the corner over there. He's got his weapon over in the closet. He doesn't have a round in the chamber, so when he secures his weapon, he'll have to put a round in the chamber. <clears throat> At that point, uh, something happens. We've got glass breaking. We've got his kid screaming in his room. That's just down the hallway to the left here. So as a responsible parent, we've got to quickly get down there and make sure that nobody harms our child. So what he's going to try to do is move to this doorway. He's going to clear this hallway. Once he clears this hallway, he's going to immediately move to his kid's room. He's going to clear that room. He's going to uh, make contact with his child, and he's going to get on uh, the phone and call 911 and try to get the, the cops to come help him out if they possibly can. Any questions on that? Okay, as you're going through, <clears throat> I'm going to give you guidance if you need it, okay? All right, you just heard glass breaking, your kid is screaming. Hurry up and secure your weapon. Keep it in a safe direction, put around in the chamber. Get face towards the threat. Safety on. Okay, start moving up. There you go, good. He transitions to his support side. Now make sure of your shots. Good, safety on. Is the target down? Is the threat down? Target is down. Okay, safety on. Hustle to the room. Hustle to the room. Clear that corner, pop the other corner. Good, stay on the wall. There's your kid. Good, you got your kid. All right, pull your kid back behind that table. Flip that table up. Get some cover. Get some cover. Okay, let's get that phone out. Let's get the cops headed this direction. Yes, I'm just having an intruder in the house. Can you please send somebody? All right, excellent. All right, index, good run. A uh, couple things there, just make sure that if you get on the line with the police, you might wanna put your, your, your phone on speaker just so you can talk to them with, with, uh, and use both hands on your weapon. If you think there's more intruders, you may not wanna do that, just a couple things to think about. Uh, the other thing is make sure that if shots have been fired, you let them know that shots have been fired and uh, that way they'll, they'll kinda know what to expect when they show up to your house. All right, so you can see how using the strong and the support side transition, it works very well. Lee did a great job. He quickly moved into this room. He's going to give up a little bit of security, but speed is going to be his security at that point. He quickly moved down. It's his house. He knows exactly where he's going. He knows where his child is in bed. He quickly moved in here, got the kid out of bed, uh, got a little bit of concealment to hide behind, and if this was a high-quality table, maybe it would actually stop bullets. Um, you can see what happened. All right, let's uh, go hot with the next student. Okay, somebody just broke into your house. Make it happen. You hear your kid screaming. Index, index, good run. Well, Kyle, we definitely see how these skills can be important inside of a real world setting. When you're working with law enforcement or civilians, how often do you see them be able to work in an environment like this and apply the skills they, they learn on the flat range as quickly as these guys did? Well, these guys are pretty switched on. I think normally, though, if we go out with law enforcement and people that are seeking this type of training, they know what they're trying to get out of it. And they want to learn for two reasons. One, they're going to protect their family, or one, one they're going to, or two, they're going to protect the citizens that they're supposed to be protecting. So they know what they're getting into, and uh, they're pretty switched on. I think that uh, just a couple hours on the range, transitioning strong to support, you see what we've accomplished here. 
when you're getting ready to practice these techniques, be sure to practice them in that live fire environment. Be sure to practice them dry or preferably with a training gun or maybe even with a broomstick at first in your home. You don't need to be messing around with live fire inside of your house, but you definitely want to practice these techniques in the environment that you're actually going to use them. Kyle, pleasure working with you. Appreciate you being on SWAT Magazine TV. And thank you for watching SWAT Magazine.